I'm so bright. My mother calls me Sun. <laughs> Get it? S U N. <laughs> All right. So, uh, emissivity is what we're going to talk about in a solar constant. We've been talking before about black bodies and how stars are black bodies. What we mean by a black body is it's a perfect emitter or absorber of radiation. But not all real objects behave like that. So what happens if an object isn't like a black body? It isn't quite. So we're going to use a term called emissivity. So it's going to be a small, that's a Greek little uh, epsilon, I think it is, a little lowercase e looking thing here, emissivity. This is what we're going to have, okay? It's going to be a term that we're going to be using. And we're going to see it's, we're going to basically scale it to what a black body does do versus what an object really does. So let's see uh, in a little bit more detail. So we're going to have this uh, called emissivity here. And it's going to be defined as this, the power emitted by an object divided by the power emitted by a black body. Now, if we're going to look at this then, let's uh, see what it is, that, what's the Stefan Boltzmann's law? Do you remember that one? That was... Um, that L, the luminosity of an object, which is, by the way, the power. Remember that that right there is actually a power. And this, by the way, is for a black body. So this is uh, sigma a t to the fourth. This here is an equation that we use with black bodies. It's called the Stefan Boltzmann law. So this one right here is what a black body does. So in other words, this one right here, I could put that directly into this power emitted by a black body. So let me just go ahead and do that now. So I'll say, all right, so that means I end up with emissivity. It's just going to be the power emitted by the object. I'll just call it P for power. Divide that by the power emitted by a black body. Well, the black body equation is this one. It's sigma a t to the fourth. See, so I'm just going to write it like this. So sigma times a times t to the fourth. Okay. And if we look at this one here carefully, then we can also say this. We can say, ah, but the power per area... I can consider that as one thing, all that times, okay, it's going to be sigma t to the fourth. And this is actually what we're going to be having here. This is actually how we're going to define it right here. So we're going to say, ah, the emissivity then is going to be the power per unit area. In other words, this p over a, that's going to be the top part. We're going to divide it by just sigma times t to the fourth, where sigma, of course, is the um, Stefan Boltzmann constant. And T is the surface temperature. So that's like the temperature of a black body that was operating like that. So that's why we're going to say, ah, sigma is this 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8. This is this black body uh, term. And we have a surface temperature of a black body, which is normally in Kelvin. And remember that the power radiator per unit area, remember, that's going to have units of watts per meter squared. Now, if you look carefully at the units, it turns out the units are all going to cancel out. You're going to have your sigma on the bottom right here, uh, but you're going to have your power per unit area on the top. Those are going to cancel out basically all these and all these. And you've got uh, um, Kelvin to the minus 4 over here. Uh, but, of course, you've got Kelvin to the 4th. They'll cancel each other out. In other words, emissivity has no units. That's why I put that down. Okay, so it's no units. You can see why, because all the units cancel out. So what does this mean? Well, if we have a black body, for example, then the emissivity, then just think about this one then, it's going to be exactly equal to this amount, like this power radiator per unit area is going to be exactly this. Therefore, a black body will have just one. But an object that completely reflects all the light, well, then it's going to have an emissivity of zero, for example. So those are just at least some different facts we can use. Now let's keep going. Let's go a little bit deeper with this one right here. So we've got something called the solar constant. We're going to define the solar constant here as the intensity of solar radiation reaching Earth. I think this is going to be an important piece here. We're going to need that. And good news, you don't have to memorize this. You're given this on your formula booklet that the, uh, sorry, data booklet, that the solar constant of the Earth. So this is telling us what reaches us you know, from the sun. So the sun right here is emitting its light, its uh, radiation, its intensity is being spread out in all directions, in three dimensions. And of course, we're sitting here on Earth. What actually reaches us? Well, the very top of the atmosphere, at least, what reaches us, this is this power per meter squared. This is basically what reaches the top of the Earth. So you might think, okay, that's easy, then we can just use this number. But you got to be very, very careful. If we're talking about where it reaches the top of the atmosphere, sure. But what actually reaches the surface of the Earth? I think that's an important piece here. So S is not what reaches the surface. And that's because, well, first of all, the sun's energy only hits half the surface. Uh, 
and that spreads out over the entire surface. So let's take a look at what ends up happening here. Now we've got this uh, radiation coming in, and if we think about the area of a circle, what's that? The area of a circle is just pi times r times square, uh, squared, I mean. So it's pi times r squared. That's the area here. Now, of course, what happens is this comes in here, and it's got to be spread out over the entire sphere. Because remember, we're talking about what actually reaches you know, the surface of the Earth. So because it's spread out over a sphere, uh, you can look up the uh, surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared. So what actually reaches the surface? Well, it's going to be the solar constant, the original amount that was emitted, uh, sorry, the, the amount that reached us, at the top here, so this 1.36 times 10 to the 3. And what we're going to do, we're going to scale it. We're going to multiply this by, well, this area right here, this pi r squared, and we're going to divide that by, because we're going to say what fraction of this uh, whole sphere here, so 4 pi r squared. Do you notice then what happens then? A lot of things cancel out, don't they? The pi r squareds cancel out. You end up with then just this, this fact that only s divided by 4. Do you notice it's just s over 4? So the conclusion we can make then, this is a really important conclusion, we need this piece of information here. I'll put it in red maybe. Because only s over 4 actually arrives at the surface. Now keep in mind, we did ignore the effects of the atmosphere. Things like uh, albedo, for example, are going to take that into account, like what the atmosphere actually does in heating and things like that. But at least we've just assumed, hey, what's going to actually reach the surface? So we've learned about emissivity, which is a property of uh, materials based on how much power they radiate. Right? So if it's a perfect black body, emissivity of 1. If it's you know, completely reflecting light, it's emissivity of 0. And we've learned about the solar constant, how much reaches the top of the atmosphere. But important is how much actually reaches the surface. It's actually S over 4.